Reckoning 7 and welcome back to Rule the Waves 3 as we continue with our playthrough as Spain. And uh, in the last episode, hopefully you'll remember, we had the excitement of a new naval treaty. So just to kind of recap what that implies, we are limited to, uh, well, 15,000 tonnes, but we cheat a little bit, so it's actually 18,000 tonne ships, 10-inch guns, um, and a maximum of 37,000 tonnes building at any one time. But more restrictive is the overall capacity, and we're limited to 190,000 tons of shipping, of which 195 can be capital ships. So, see, we're well under our, our uh, allowance at the minute, but there's not too much headway for building things. Uh, we did start to nudge your way into naval aviation, um, and to the time last episode as well, I was starting to build a few bases. And indeed, um, I have set up now a couple of air bases in the Caribbean, a couple in the Med, uh, three in the Med there, and then two out in the Philippines. I've also put a couple of six-inch coastal batteries in the various places. Um, well, one, they can harass ships if we get too close, but they, they do, I believe, also delay the kind of time, mean, mean time to fire for naval invasion events as well, or so I've been led to believe. So that's, uh, that's why I'm building them out in these bits and pieces. I delete some older 4-inch ones. We'll build some new ones. Uh, so all of that building is going to take a few months and does leave us in the red. So we'll probably have to hold off and then we'll continue to build up our pot and I think we're going to have to build ourselves some new cruisers, uh, some new heavy cruisers specifically. If I go to our ships and service, the uh, two that we have, these uh, where are you? these Emperor Carlos V classes are starting to show their age. They're kind of 20 years old now. They're very slow um, and we could definitely do with improving these. Maybe kind of getting, I don't know, a couple of 12,000 tonners or something of that ilk. We shall see what the design looks like when we get to it. Um, okay, and in terms of the geopolitical stuff, I think we, we China allied with America last time. Now briefly, we kind of, I got scared off China as a target, but I was humming and hawing and actually... I think that might not be a bad challenge for us. So I'm going to turn my Intel on China back up to high. Now, why would I say such a thing does it, you know, does it maybe seem a bit foolhardy? Well, there's a few reasons. First and foremost, we do not share a home zone with America or China, but also America is a real threat here. Um, so although they could certainly come with a large fleet, they couldn't really blockade us for any length of time because they wouldn't have the basis to support the fleet um, and they would start running to all sorts of trouble. So that's quite positive from a blockade perspective. Um, and then the other bit is obviously out in the Pacific. America doesn't really have much in the way of, of bases. So you can see here they've only got a base capacity of 40, um, where we're up to 113. Now, base capacity is always a little bit opaque in terms of what does it actually relate to. Uh, but if you have a look at our current fleet, most of which is in Northern Europe, uh, is currently taking up 117 base capacity. So we could get almost all our current fleet in there, uh, and America could get about a third of it. So, and there's a big caveat coming at the end, but if that was to be the case, you know, we could definitely take on the Chinese fleet, plus whatever small portion of America decides to turn up, um, and probably do very well for ourselves. Now, the one caveat is, and this is where I, I don't have certain days. I can't remember if allies share base capacity. Because if that was the case in America, I'd quite happily bring their entire blooming fleet over here, and that would cause us a little bit of a headache. Um, I did have a quick squiz around the interwebs before I started recording this, but I couldn't see anything definitive. Um, so we may have to just try to experiment with that one. Do you know what next time what I need to do is, next time I'm in war with an ally, I can, I can uh, drive around and drive around, sail around and see if I can utilize their bases. Um, yeah, so... Another interesting bit over here, if we turn on invasion ranges, is obviously Taiwan is, is within range of the Philippines. If we did get into war with China, we could attempt to steal Taiwan from them. Now, obviously, China could also attempt to naval invade us. However, um, I have a funny feeling, because this is the way the blockade mechanics have been implemented, that it's going to be the same for the naval invasion ones, where supremacy is done on a nation-by-nation -nation basis. So you may have seen it, I can't remember if it's happened this playthrough, but I've certainly seen other people's playthrough, where although the combined allied forces had enough dominance to blockade, it doesn't fire unless one person has uh, dominance. And therefore, 
we may be in a position where we can do some naval invasions or potentially at least protect from Chinese ones, uh, irrespective of the size of the American fleet. Which is a little bit gamey, uh, and that's maybe something they need to address, but uh, something we could certainly lean on in the meantime. Yep, yeah, so that's where we are. So we're going to have to wait. Wow, what did I change? Why is this so negative? This number's gone up. Ah, that's why. No, no, your mouth pulled. I swear this has gone up from about 200 since the start. Uh, I'm not sure I will. Oh, intelligence, that's why. Okay, good. Mystery solved. Um, the other thing we could do was potentially expand the faces in the Philippines. However, it is very expensive. 1.2 million per month for 36 months. Uh, and I say we can already house quite a lot there, so I'm not sure that's worth it. Now, is it any cheaper to say expand Guam? It is much cheaper. Mm, that's something we could do and improve our kind of supporting bases. But again, I don't, f I think that we can get big enough fleet over here. That's not a, not a problem. Groovy. Okay, right. Let's, uh, let's advance time a little bit. Oh, okay. Prime Minister's unhappy from all my mouth balling. Fine. Uh, so if we go by type, I think all my big fleet ships are, no, we're not quite, quite all in reserve. I'll put you on reserve then. My poor money's happy now. Happy now. Lots and lots of scrapping going on. It's good to see. Uh, some of the old battleships, battle cruisers. Wow, lots of comply with treaty, comply with treaty, comply with treaty. Excellent. This is what you like to see. <laughs> wow. Well, there goes the last of Italia's. So let's have a quick look at the Almanac now it's updated. Uh, yeah, people have been gutted. Austria going down to one battleship. Italy down to one battleship. Quite heavy in the battle cruisers though. China amazingly has three. As the wee bars are fairly small. They still have some pre-dreadnoughts. Interesting one. Oh, I'm in Savalian training with China. They've lent really heavily into submarines. So you've got 50 odd of them, which is where the most of their tonnage is. Which does mean they don't have much of a threat in terms of surface uh, ships. I mean, they have... No destroyers, which is an interesting choice, China. Uh, almost no cruisers. Yeah, only a pitiful number of uh, heavy ships, but a lot of submarines. So a little bit, and that's certainly a threat. You can win wars with submarines alone. Um, but should mean we can kind of hopefully ruffle something on the surface for a little bit. But if it comes to that, we've talked all this up, and it's one of these things that probably never happens. Okay, industrial production has improved through peace. Bully for us. Okay, air base is popping in. That's good. Oh, that's not good. You've been upset with the Brooklyn for some reason. Huh. Okay. Uh, no, let's not create anything anywhere. A new fighter. So we've got the Aero Technica and we've got the Sieva. Sieva. Uh, okay, what have we got? Max, what do we want from? What do we want from this? We want max speed and we want. Well, ideal reliability, but we don't know it. This one is faster. This one has about 25% more range though, and is not much slower. Even firepower. Uh, this one's not as maneuverable, but it's a bit tougher. Well, this one might have kind of better dodge and things, but this one maybe survive a little bit more. Um, I do like the, that little bit of increased range. It doesn't seem like a lot, but I say that's kind of like 25%, which feels, it seems like a significant number. So we're going to go with this one for just now. Beautiful. Uh, so we now have Float Plane Scout, Naval Patrol, and a Fighter. Is that all the ones we know about? Yes, it is. Okay, and we'll probably leave those for a couple of years, and then we'll go request some new ones. Um, and then we need to start deciding what to put in our bases. And it's probably going to be a little bit of float plane scout and then all naval bombers. I don't think we need any fighters in the base at the minute because the range is kind of rubbish. Although, what's the range of my naval bombers? Actually, pretty good. Much better than my float plane scout. I'm just, well, I'm just going to naval patrol aircraft, am I? Yeah, why would I have anything else?
Oh, so these, sorry, I, I think I was reading these as um, torpedo bombers. I think these are like uh, scouts, essentially. Yeah, this is just a scout. No, to, can't fire to torpedoes. Okay, so I'm not sure this this role of the aircraft was in the last game. Okay, well then, yeah, well, let's probably just start with scouts until we have something useful to put in the bases. Uh, I'm I'm tempted not even to bother building the air arms until we get closer to war because it's just maintenance we've got to pay for. Uh, although it'd be good to have maybe a couple. So what I might do is if I go to my air groups. Uh, I've only got one built, but let's create a couple of new wings. Why can I not select anything? What? Much confusion. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm an idiot. They haven't finished developing. Ha! <laughs> okay, so we'll do nothing. Let's keep going. Jenny's uh, fighter. So we are. I think our firepower was less than that. Raid. Look at that radius, though. Uh, so we're slower. Fifty-one nautical miles. That's almost nothing. Our weight seems. Our machinery is nice. <sighs> hmm. Okay. New area of research: amphibious operations. This makes me nervous because. Um. Cuba is going to become vulnerable, I think, in one tick. Yeah, or not Cuba, we lost Cuba. Guantanamo Bay, I think, becomes vulnerable on the, after the first tick of naval invasion stuff to Miami. And we don't want to go to war with America once that's the case, not until we are much stronger. So that's something we're going to keep an eye on. But that's just unlocking it. That's not, uh, it's not ticking up the next one. I don't think this is a priority for us. I think we can reach some bits and pieces for just now, so let's just put that down to low. Okay, more air bases, lovely jubbly. Uh, aircraft bombing of ships enables air bombing of ships with light bombs. Okay. Yeah, these these things. Uh, Angola's rebelling. So I do think we want patrol aircraft pretty much everywhere. So let's, uh, but again, I don't want to maybe create a million air wings because then you got to pay for a million air wings. Uh, so let's create, I don't know, maybe three air wings, something like that. I didn't mean to do that. Where are you? We shall, uh, do we want one fighter air wing? I don't know. I just don't know if it's worth it, to be perfectly honest. So let's disband you. I don't think it is. Uh, I would like to change your number. I don't know, a group of five it seems reasonable. Uh, can I copy you? Yeah. Let's, I don't know, we'll throw a couple of you around. Sorry. Curse of the misclicks here. Change number. Five, thank you. And I'll blur you. We will paste an air unit. Uh, see there, we can paste an air unit. And Guantanamo, sure, right. And what we'll do is we'll actually probably move these around when war starts. There we'll have just, so 20 aircraft at the minute, and that way they'll get a little bit, I will put them all into reserve actually. But at least we'll have some semblance of um, readiness, because these will have some aircraft in them. We should have hopefully a little bit of experience. And it's just something without being a huge drain. So that's, well, I mean, that's already 500 a month. Aircraft can get very expensive very quickly. Okay, all our little batteries are done. Beautiful. Damage control improvement is good. And Angola Rebellion continues. Not that that particularly interests me. That's not where our turrets lie. Wow, we are now getting 2.4 million a month positive balance. That's nice to see. So I'm going to build us up to maybe 30,000 and then we'll design something. New research A. That's one we're probably going to want to ratchet up the old um, importance list. Where are you? Mm, Anti-aircraft, yeah, let's take that one on high. Anti, yeah, anti-aircraft, tell you. <clears throat> it's gonna be very important. Improved seaplane carrier, that's not that interesting. No, thank you, not at all, it's no problem. Ca 
Captain De Neville Furman II. He was preparing the football game. He wants more time, but they'll impact operational exercises. I mean, go for it. Our crew quality is already in the toilet because we've mothballed and reserved fleet into most of our fleets. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we win an unspectacular game. Well done, team. If you look at our ships, because we've got so many mothballs and reserves, look at our crew quality. Poor, 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 poor. These ones, these ones, I think, should work their way up to fair. I thought reserve kept you fair. Mothball was poor. And active was good or elite. Essentially retained whatever you had. One of our major arms manufacturers wants to enter a technology sharing agreement with Germany. Yeah. I'm okay with the Germans. In fact, I wouldn't mind making friends with Germans. Okay, a couple of research boosts. Excellent, more money flowing in. Okay, well now we need to uh, build something before they take our money away. The Minister of the Navy feels that it's a pity such a fine officer as Rear Admiral Ventura with a scene going command. He suggests that the Ventura should put in command in the first battle division. A vital duty to be a coal liner. No, yeah, 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 it's fine. I don't really like the idea of you meddling in my affairs, but I have no problem with giving Ventura a post. Okay, we've got a bunch of money. Let's design ourselves a ship. So I would like a army cruiser. So we've got 8,000 tons in armor cruisers, two of them, so 16,000 tons of armor cruiser already. We've got 6,000 tons spare, so that takes us up to 22,000 tons. And we've got probably about 8,000 tons of corvettes we could scrap if we wanted to. Um, so our options, I think, are we could go either like three 10,000 tonners, or we could go a couple of maybe 12,000 tonners. Now, I think the difference is we want, we got, what is it we actually want out of this uh, uh, cruiser design? Um, and we probably want something really nippy. We're, we're thinking about using them out in the colonies. I mean, again, its role is, is really going to be for destroying ideally light cruisers. Let's have a quick look at some things put it. So we have got currently, that's eight inch guns and a problem. But if we look at our almanac, what other kind of heavy cruisers do we know about? Uh, let's look at America. What's your latest one? The Brooklyn. Oh, which uh, is the one that borked out. Houston here. They've gone for eight inch guns, six inch belt. Is that an older one? It doesn't look that old. Okay. Uh, I know China's probably not worth looking at. I'll look at someone like Great Britain. What are your heavy cruisers like? You've gone for the slightly larger 10 inch, or slightly less armored. 23 knots, interesting. I'm keen to maybe lean on the 10-inch guns. It's the biggest ones we can utilize. They are a bit slower firing. Uh, but let's have a go. Okay, we'll start with our heavy armor cruiser. Heavy cruiser. Just all design me one. Okay, you've gone all the way up to 14,800, which is probably a little bit much. You've gone for triple turrets. Triple turrets are nice. They are obviously safe, efficient. They can jam is the only thing. Um, what speed have you gone for? 28, that is nippy. What are you paying for a knot? Five hundred, well, four hundred tons for a knot there. Three hundred for that one. I'm not sure we need twenty-eight knots. So if I wanted to bring you down to something a bit more manageable, let's say twelve thousand tons. Three board range medium. That's fine. Belt. If we, can we? Yeah. Okay. And we're starting to run into weight issues. Hmm. Computer defense condition, that's fine. Ah, 14,000 tons just feels like a lot. What we've got, oh, we don't need eight inch gun secondaries, that's for sure. Oh, oh. Okay, we don't really have, I'm just seeing what we had in the ways of quality. The answer is not very much, but six inch secondaries is absolutely fine and dandy. I wouldn't mind getting a, closer to something like this. Uh, direct firing two positions, that's good. Really random number of rounds per gun. I don't know why that annoys me that it's a random number, but it does. And I probably, we probably need a little bit more than this. And that leaves me about half a million tons to try and squeeze out somewhere. Yeah. We've got our all or nothing armor scheme. What else have we got in here? No torpedoes. Yeah, we probably want torpedoes actually. They are a bit of a liability, but it's sometimes nice to have that, um, 
the range, so you know what torpedo range is, and also maybe to scale your larger ships, but perhaps we could forgo those. We have no tertiaries. And we could bring this down to... That looks silly, but okay. 10 mounts. 10, no, 12. There you go. That's even. Sort yourself out. There we go. Six, six inch guns aside, which is the reason why I can deal with some of the lighter ones. A couple of 10 inch guns. I kind of like towards this. We've gone for a little bit more of the of the belt. We'll maybe potentially give up half an inch. I think two inch decks okay at the minute, to be honest. Be a bit vulnerable as air power improves. Uh, do we have any better torpedo defection? We can't build on these ships yet. Uh, and we still have rate of fire penalties on our secondaries, which is unfortunate, but say la vie. All right, uh, I am. Um, <laughs> Probably would rather not bring it down to 25 knots. Is there anything else we could do? I mean, we could probably carry a little bit less ammo. Fuel, it feels low, but... There's no point in having lots of ammunition if you can't win the fight. I'd also rather have some more armour on my turret top. I think that's a bit of a vulnerability. I'm going, to, I'm going to do a bit of a think about this. Alright, I think this is what I have landed on. Um, so I made a few tweaks. I brought, I did bring the rounds done back down to 105, which it feels light, but it's probably, I'd probably rather get in and expend my ammo and run away than carry more ammo and have to give up something else. Um, I did tweak this one slightly down as well. In return, we have, oh, in addition, we've gone up to 12,600. Uh, and in return, we have added an extra half inch onto our turret top armor. I was having a little bit of a look at the gun data. So as you can see for against kind of 10 inch quality zero, um, we have immunity, almost none against ourselves essentially. Interestingly, the deck penetrations are still pretty poor. Uh, and obviously once you get closer than 14,000, we're punching through our own five and a half inch armor. If we had a look at, I had a quick squiz at the 8 inch gun data, just out of interest, and it's actually not that different. I think you only get about another thousand uh, yards before you can indeed start punching through a five and a half inch armor with an 8 inch gun. So there's perhaps something to be said there that actually you could have uh, your, you know, quicker firing 8 inch caliber might give you a better time out of these heavier 10 inch guns. And if I had quality one in either of them, that would more than swim a decision. The other thing I didn't check was if we had a look somewhere else. They don't have better guns than us. Nope. Uh, Britain, we're kind of friendly with you. Nope. No, so your weight remaining with 209, Germany's 161. It shows the difference in terms of tech. Uh, Austria Hungary's not really. What we, I know we're going to go war with USA, but just of interest. No, okay. So the other thing is we could build it in Britain. That saves us a bit of weight uh, where we could even... I wonder, could we squeeze six? No, not quite. Well, we could go five and a half and just add more rounds in. Is that worth it? More rounds, but the risk of building overseas and we keep, we've got to keep friendly with them for the next 22 months. Nah, we'll just build it at home. Let's bring you down to uh, 105, I think, and then we'll put an extra five rounds in there. Okay, so that, I think, is where we're going to land. So we've got six, or, yeah, six double six-inch turrets as our secondaries, and they should take care of most things, especially like cruisers, they'll help, they'll help with those. And we've got a couple, main armament of a couple of triples of 10. Um, I, I think that's a good rate of good rate of knots in terms of the speed. Uh, it's faster than anything we currently have. Now we know there's light cruisers, or that's not true, our light cruisers are 27, but you know, that makes sense, faster light cruisers. Um, and you should certainly be able to hunt down any of the older ones. And I can accept some of the newer ones will all get away from us. Okay. Uh, oh. I need a name. 
we've kind of gone place names. Yeah, we've got Navarra, uh, Asturias, Madrid. Uh, all right, let me go in and come up with something. Okay, so I've decided we're going to go for the Duro, um, and we're going to have the sister ship will be the Ebro. So these are named after rivers in Spain to keep on the kind of geographical naming, but uh, not lean permanently on cities and things. Okay, uh, let's go for it. Oh, poo. Well, why did you design the ship then? Hmm. So you're not gonna let me have it. What size do I need to get to before you let me have it? Oh, just none of them. Ah. All right, I'm going to go back to drawing board. I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, well, things have changed dramatically. So you see, she's crept up to 13,000 tons, uh, design creep, if ever there was some. Um, and we've had to reduce some of the armor. So deck extended has dropped half an inch. Conning tower has dropped half an inch as well. Um, and in the front, we've gone for three double turrets. Which is okay, but the issue I have is a, our forward center line here, it's not superimposed, so if we're on a, a straight chase, we're still, we're only gonna be firing two barrels at someone, which isn't ideal. Um, on the plus side, I was having a wee nosy around, uh, in terms of we actually do have torpedo defense too, so we have managed to up that, so we're now a little bit more protected, which is, I think, good. Um, as yeah, rounds per gun now is 100, that, it does feel light, and 155 for our secondaries, so I think we're going for brief flashes in the pan with these perhaps um, and we're ever 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 so slightly over but that's fine we can deal with one ton over I think we're finally going to call this good enough we still have a rate of fire penalty for these which is not not great but um, technology will reduce that and then eventually we'll get quality one gun so between when we replace the turrets we should get rid of that penalty yes yes go for it three months beautiful we want to build two of those, hopefully. And we'll have to scrap our existing heavy cruisers and some corvettes. An uprising in Africa. Uh, we'd send a force to evacuate our nationals. We will send a battleship. I don't mind ratcheting a little bit of tension up. We can now build even bigger uh, destroyers. Good. Why, why Italy? Why always Italy? The Naval Committee of Parliament wants to have a look at the, design f at the details for a design study for the Duro. Um, I'm okay with that. There's no great rush. Well, the economy recovers. This is good. Keep the money coming up. The Japanese government wants to buy fleet tactics. By all means, I'll take the money. Especially, um, we're not really looking to go to war with Japan currently. Eliminates rate of fire and reliability penalty. See, now that's, oh, that's good. But I still don't think we can... That eliminates the need for um, the hull penalty we're seeing. Right, so if we go here, what are you giving me? You are faster by, that's what, like 15%-ish? That's quite fast, that's good. Range is increased. No. Hang on. This is in service. You're offering me a slower plane with smaller range, but less tough. Um. Okay, thank you. What? Did I just click? Cancel? Cancel. That was odd. That was a, a terrible idea from that private company. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, let's just quickly throw something together just to see if I go on my cruiser and auto design, da 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 da. You've got, let's put these up, increase guns, increase guns, torpedo protection, let's throw a one on there. What are you telling me? Yeah, we still have the problem. Okay. Hasn't alleviated that, but does make triple turrets a little bit more attractive, but only on either really slow ships or really undefended ships, which I must admit I'm not sold on. This is excellent. Oh, that's good. Uh, no, thank you. 
So some weight savings there. Well, this one, we're going to see if there's any major bake breakthroughs and we want to try and revise our design when it finishes. Okay, mine rails aren't that interesting, but fine. Um, do I want to rework design? It will add at least one month on, but it will show us. Let's see, okay, are there any, any big changes? We got 46 tons out of that, actually. Is that enough for another five shells? Enough for another 10 shells. That's a 10% increase in our uh, ammo. That's not to be sniffed at. Okay, it's going to obviously cost us a little bit. But that's okay. One month, 400 bucks. That's a bargain. I'll take it. The US fighter, what are we looking at? Um, I believe we are faster and we go farther. So, who shocks to you? And we go further than your aircraft. Our aircraft seems to be doing quite well at the minute. Hey, we stole the knowledge of concentration firing. Okay. We're trying to work out what it is. And we have, ooh, 16 inch guns. One of my favorite calibers, I think. We'll have to hopefully build, you know, we have a real lack of proper battleships. That's my only concern here. We've not really managed to field anything in the likes of a proper battleship. Um, we may we may end up kind of skipping all the way to fast battleships. Although it is only 1918. I forget how early on we are, considering how long we're playing this. Okay, we now would like to build these. I would very much like two of these. I mean, I'd like three, but we don't have the tonnage for three. As it is, we're going to be scrapping a bunch of stuff. So give me two, please. Uh, and you are going to be the Ebro. Beautiful. And obviously, it just over two years. And uh, it's barely made a dent in our monthly balance, actually. Um, a very, very slight negative. Could look to increase our dock size. That's going to cost me about 10 million. I mean, I'm going to want to do this at some point. So, okay, let's do that now. I think we can afford that for the year it takes. Ah, yes, please. I'll take your explosive shells. Thank you, Japan. And then for free, Germany will give us some advances. So we now have a gyro stabilizer. Uh, okay. Which is just, we don't have to build it. We just get that, which is nice. Our industry continues to grow. Excellent. Original war seems imminent in South America. One of our major arms manufacturers wants to step up exports. What is your reaction? Yay, let's go for that. <laughs> Always say yes. Uh, okay, even less engine requirements. It's nice to see. And we're almost breaking even again. Our, our budget's crept up. It was 180 at the height of the war, just to kind of give a bit of context. Um, presumably everyone else's budgets are creeping up as well. Uh, yeah. Interesting, Italy's is bigger than f French. France is... Government is going to sell... Government, British government is going to sell us uh, superimposed guns and destroyers. Uh, sure. We're not up, going up against Britain right now, so that's fine. We'll give them a little bit of money. Wow, this uh, sharing with Germany is going fantastically well. Okay, so better torpedoes? Nope. Uh, so we're in June of 1918, so I'd say it's probably time to do... Well, they were only 1917 by the time they were developed. Maybe we'll give it to the end of the year and then we'll request new ship, uh, new plane types. Boom times! If there's been a windfall in tax, how should we spend the money? Uh, I'm going to go long term prosperity. On the not unrealistic assumption that then feeds back into a larger year, uh, kind of yearly budget permanently. Because I don't think we're in a desperate need for the money short term. Okay. Technology sharing continues to work well. We now know what depth charges are. That's something we probably do want to actually put on a few of our ships. Ah, uh -huh. okay, so this just improves our capability, not the range. So that's fine. Okay, and we've got to keep an eye when that tech starts popping in, because that's going to be the kind of threat from America. Now, we still uh, are doing relatively well in terms of cash money. And I want to increase Guam. I probably not, because if we manage to get another possession of that, I'll alleviate everything we need, and we do have the Philippines. Um, yeah, let's just hold our horses for just now. Ooh, a rebellion. We don't really want that one to go, because then we can't nab it if it goes neutral. 
British Light Cruiser, probably uh, only 29 knots, but it's a small one. Okay. And Float Plane Scout. So this is faster, a little bit range, a little bit further. Yeah, it looks like a straight upgrade, to be honest. I'll take it. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Private Shipbuilding. So that saves me a bunch of money. Train planes. These ones are particularly interesting. You are building. <laughs> uh, this is what the Austrian designers have chosen to do with the naval uh, treaty restrictions. Build this ridiculous thing. Bunch of little pea shooters on it. Uh, it's not even that fast. Reasonably thick belt, but that is. Uh... Oh, they've got light. Eh? Okay. A bit of a joke of a gun. Ah, well, there we go. We now know what light A weapons are. Good. Ooh, this is a big one. Okay, air launch torpedoes. So can I now get a torpedo bomber? Yes, I can. All right, we want this. Um, I don't really care about bomb mode because as long as you can carry a torpedo, job done, and you should be able to. It's in the description. Um, I do care about range is probably important. Um, and then... Probably still reliability. So that might be less of an issue. These early ones aren't great. Speed's quite good. Maybe toughness to try and make sure you get there. Although, because of the way the A mechanics work, essentially there's like an order of which things trigger. And really, only people have light AA at the minute, and that only attacks, that only gets to attack planes after they've made their attack run, and only on the ship they're targeting. So I suppose more will get home, but it shouldn't blunt our ability to attack. Um, so let's just go to liability. I will probably change that slightly going forward. Right, our naval air patrol aircraft is actually poor reliability, so maybe we'll roll the dice on that one. Um, it's November, so that's fine. Oh no, I've just literally just put one in place. Right, Quinn, come on. Get your head in game. Uh, we can now expand our naval our air bases, and it is something I probably want to do. Uh, that's not a particularly good view. This is a better view. Yeah, I would like. Probably these are all my chosen airfields, and I might not push them all the way to kind of the hundreds, but I do think I want to get them up to the 40s. Well, apparently this is cheap as chips. Which I suppose makes sense once you've got infrastructure there, you're just kind of, I don't know, building another hangar. We are doubling its capacity. Good. All right, so we'll have 48 aircraft fields. Again, we haven't got that many aircraft in service, but that's quite all right. Once we get torpedo bombers, we'll probably get a bunch of those. Uh, Austria Hungary. Oh, look at that nice flat tension graph. That pleases me for some reason. Uh, National Hero. Okay, good. Rebellion was crushed in Taiwan or Formosa, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, tensions are ever ever so slight at the minute. Not really a problem. Rest air, we don't know what it is, and we're into 1919. The de oh, see, even America's come with it. Oh, they've gone for the at least they've had the sense to shrink it down. That's slow though. Why is that so slow? Surely not. Yeah, it feels generally like a terrible ship. But okay, America. I'm glad you're spending your treaty tonnage limits on bad ships. That pleases me. Uh, you should see some people scrapping stuff. Eh, just little ships. Old destroyers and the like. And we'll probably want to renovate our destroyer fleet as well. Okay, ah, torpedo bomber is beautiful. So this one, uh, again, range is important. Now, the torpedo is a heavy load, which means our range is going to be this one here. So there's not really much between them. Five kind of nautical miles is not a huge amount. Uh, the bottom one is slightly faster. It's not quite as tough. Still four. It has a very small amount of firepower. Um, so I'm leaning probably towards this one over the top one. Now, it's not that much slower either. And it is going to be going on the cruise speed for most of it, to be honest. And it's a bit tougher. It doesn't have firepower, but it's not your job to shoot down stuff. So I think we're going to go for the Gil Puzzle. 
far, you know, it's got the biggest, equally biggest range. It's like, what, 10% slower? Not even. But it's a bit tougher, so it might survive a little bit more. Let's go for it. Once they are done, we're going to start building a few air wings, probably batches of 10, and we'll place them around the world. Okay, brilliant. So I think that'll do us for today. So I, I'm pleased with progressing. I'm glad to kind of tick through a little bit more time. I'm, uh, yeah, I think those new cruisers are going to be exciting. I and mean, then I think we might look to upgrade our battleships, might be the next thing we we'll go for. Oh, they are quite limited on capital ship tonnage limit. So we shall see. Uh, but we are, we're getting to the point where we have lots of money and, and not that many old things to rebuild. I did have an interesting thought though, because what you could do is you could get here, you get these down to like one month away from being ready and then just halt their construction. So it does cost you a little bit, but you, but you then have a whole bunch of ships you could essentially be ready to fire the trigger on as soon as the war starts. It feels very gamey, but uh, certainly would be a way of doing that. Anyway, food for thought. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheerio!